Welcome to Altium Designer Adding Hierarchy. In this module, we will update the Raspberry Pi daughter board project that we have been using, creating a hierarchical design from the current flat design. The WC topping design consisted of a few schematics and was simple enough so that it didn't require using a hierarchical design approach. We can, however, use this example design to demonstrate the process for creating hierarchy in Altium. Altium provides for both top-down and bottom-up design approaches. In fact, these approaches can be mixed without difficulty, as we will see in this module. Using the example SL1 project, we can explore the various elements of a hierarchical design. Looking at the top-level schematic, we see both components and blocks. These blocks are called schematic sheet symbols, and they reference a schematic file. We can open up their property window by double-clicking on the sheet symbol. Here we see the reference designator and, more importantly, the link to the schematic file represented by this sheet symbol. Using the sheet symbol enables a designer to add levels to the project, allowing for a cleaner representation at the higher level with large blocks containing numerous schematics. Here we see the LCD switch LED sheet symbol with its sheet entries. Holding the control key down and double clicking on it opens up the referenced schematic. In this schematic, if you hold down the control key and double click on a port, you will traverse the hierarchy and highlight the sheet entry for the port and its connections. You can use this control double click to follow the signal through the ports as well as through sheet entries. As a quick review, in Altium, top down design flow creates a top level schematic and then uses sheet symbols that point to future planned schematics. The sheet symbols can have sheet entries that represent planned I.O. signal connections between the top level and the lower level schematics. As opposed to bottom-up design, it starts by creating the lower level schematics with the actual ports and then uses those schematics to auto-generate sheet symbols with sheet entries for use on higher level schematics. We will employ a hybrid approach showing both the bottom-up as well as top-down methodologies. We already have the five schematics captured with ports from the flat design exercise that we had already done, so we will use those as part of the bottom-up approach. To illustrate the top-down design methodology, we will first add a top-level schematic, we'll call it top-level, and then we'll create two schematic sheet symbols for the new mid-level schematics. To add the planned mid-level schematic sheet symbols, click on Place, then Sheet Symbol, and then click on the Tab button so that we can open up its properties window. We'll enter mid1 for the designator and processor underscore power for the file name. This file name will be used to generate the mid-level schematic. We can place this sheet symbol and now we will do the same for the IO logic block, creating a sheet symbol and placing it next to the processor power sheet symbol. Now we can add the sheet entries for the connections that we are planning between the blocks. To add a sheet entry, click on Place, Add Sheet Entry, then hit the tab to configure this sheet entry's properties. We will add the negated CS signal name and select Output for the direction. Note that the placement of the sheet entry only becomes possible when we're actually hovering over a sheet symbol, like this. We could continue to enter the rest of the sheet entries manually, but given the fact that the schematics already exist, we can make use of the power of Smart Paste. Opening up the processor interface schematic, select all of the ports as a group and then hit Ctrl-C to copy them. Now back at the top level schematic, we'll use the Smart Paste. We'll select the ports as the source and now we'll select Sheet Entries. So let's place these on the sheet symbol. Notice how it resizes to fit all the new additional entries. We will do this for the rest of the needed connections for this block, and then again for the IO logic block sheet entries. If you were truly doing a top-down design, you would be entering all of these in manually. Again, we're just using a shortcut because we have the available schematics. Now that we have all the sheet entries on the sheet symbols, we can arrange them as needed for the top-level connections between the two mid-level sheet symbols. Simply left mouse click and hold on the entry and move it to the desired location on the sheet symbol. Notice it rotates to face outward on all the sides of the sheet symbol. 
Now we can wire up the connections between the two mid-level schematic symbols using wires and, if needed, buses. One shortcut that I like to use is the control drag method for generating wires. If we line up the sheet entries and then align the two sheet symbols together so their pins overlap, we can perform the same operation by holding the control key down and then use the mouse to drag the sheet symbol away, creating the wires. This generates the wires as you can see. We will need to add the wire to bus connection manually to finish wiring at this level. Once we have completed the wiring, we can generate the mid-level schematics using Altium. We could have generated the schematics prior to wiring up the sheet symbols, but I find it's a good sanity check to ensure that I have all the sheet entries that I need. Right-click on each schematic sheet and then select Sheet Symbol Actions. Then Create Sheet from Sheet Symbol. Now we have new schematics with ports generated from the sheet symbols and the sheet entries. With the top level wired and the mid-level schematics created, we will switch to the bottom-up approach and use the existing schematics to generate schematic sheet symbols, placing them on the next level or the mid-level schematics. Now in the mid-level processor power schematic, we will need to add both the processor interface and the power logic using auto-generated sheet symbols. To auto-generate a schematic sheet symbol for the processor interface, click on Design, Create Sheet Symbol from Sheet, and then select the processor interface. This creates a processor interface sheet symbol with entries. The entries were generated obviously from the ports that existed on the schematic. Now let us add the power logic, right-clicking in the schematic window, selecting Sheet Actions, Create Sheet Symbol from Sheet, both approaches will work to generate the sheet symbols. Pick the method that you prefer. Notice that the power sheet symbol does not have any sheet entries. Remember, there are no normal ports on that schematic. They are just power ports, and power ports are globally connected, so they do not require sheet entries. Now that we have the two lower schematic sheet symbols on the mid-level schematic, we should add the wiring and move and adjust the ports and the sheet entries as needed. Again, a time saver is to copy the sheet entries and smart paste to generate ports. In this case, because we started initially at the top and created the ports on this schematic, we do not need to do this. But if we were fully following the bottom up approach, this would work nicely. We will continue with the second mid level schematic containing the three sheet symbols for the other logic blocks needed to complete the design. We'll speed up the process, but we'll show it to you for the purpose of completeness. Following the same approach, we would generate schematic sheet symbols from each of the schematics, place them on the schematic, adjust their sheet entries as needed, and then wire them up and connect them to the ports. Let's compile this project to see if we missed any connections and to review the electrical rule check report in the message window. Just as a quick refresher, right-clicking on the project file, we should verify the options tab has the automatic net identifier scope setting. Again, we talked about this earlier. This is the normal default and I would recommend staying with it unless absolutely necessary to change. Looking at the messages panel, if there had been any reported errors, we would have followed the same approach as we did with the flat design to track down the source of the errors. Double clicking on a warning, for example, we see it brings us to the lower level warning source location. In addition to jumping to the warning source, if we traverse the hierarchy, we will see the net highlighted throughout as well. Remember the control key double click method for following the signal across the layers of hierarchy. In this module, we showed how to use Altium for hierarchical designs, both top down and bottom up approaches. Using schematic sheet symbols and sheet entries allows for multi layer schematics.